Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vesperisms. Today we're going to be talking about input and output. So as you know, I try to always talk about where I'm at in hopes that it will help you too, if you're in a creative field especially. And uh, today we're going to be talking about something that I'm very much dealing with at the moment. And so let's, let's get started. So when I wrote this book, What the Night Sings, which just came out this year, um, I put my ever-loving heart and soul into this book. Uh, this, this book is a result of a sort of unearthly degree of inspiration and perspiration. Um, I'm not saying compared to anybody else, but just for me, it was like it definitely the most complete work that I have ever done and the hardest work I've ever done. So I wrote it at the same time that I was doing my graduate thesis at School of Visual Arts. I was getting my degree in illustration, my MFA. And um, this was not my thesis. This was my first year project. And so... I was working on this and my thesis at the same time. So I was essentially doing two, two years of work in one year. Um, I don't think I ever got more than four hours of sleep a night for that, for that whole year. But I had so much fuel. Um, it wasn't just my research, which was really interesting, but um, it, my research was really hard work, but it wasn't hard. What I mean by that is that the research was fairly easy to find. I was in New York, I could talk to Holocaust survivors, and the Holocaust is one of the most well-documented events in human history, so it was easily gotten to even if it was emotionally difficult. So it was very emotionally hard, and it was a lot of hard work hours, but the process came fairly easy uh, because the fuel was coming largely from my own heart. So think of your heart and your your inspiration life as a bank account. And when you write your first book or you get your first big commission or let's say apply it to whatever field you're in, it's as though you've been putting away a dollar for every experience that you've ever had in your life. So like the first time someone ever called you a name on the playground when you were four years old, the first time someone called you their best friend, every boy you've ever kissed, every boy you broke up with, every boy who broke up with you, that fight you got in with your parents that you thought you'd never recover from, the exhilaration of graduating from high school or winning an award, or the day you wake up and realize that the thing that you thought was going to do you in didn't, and you're actually happier than you thought you were. Well, by the time you're ready to write your first book, or you get your first big commission or whatever, um, you're drawing down from that bank account like crazy. It kind of feels like you won the lottery. You've got like, wow, I've got a million bucks in the bank and, and like, how can I spend, you know, this, this capital that I have? So like, you know, I know exactly what this character would say in this situation or yes, I've been where she is. I know, I know how this feels or, ooh, I know somebody like this antagonist and I'm going to, I'm going to draw down from that bank account to write in this personal situation and they'll never know. Ha ha ha. And it's really fun, you know, even if the subject matter is hard, the process can be really fun because it's like, it's like winning a game of Monopoly every single day. I mean, the hours are long, the work is really hard, but the payoff is huge. Well, then you come to writing your second book and you sit down to write and nothing. It's like, you realize that that metaphor you used in the first book for that first kiss, uh, you know, it tasted like apples. Well, in the second book, you're writing and you're like, it tasted like blackberries. And you're like, oh my gosh, could I, could I stop with the fruit metaphors already? Anyway, it's like you realize that you use the same words, the same imagery again and again, and you start to get really afraid that you have nothing original to say anymore. Like you've used all your good ideas. And you're sure that your editor is going to hate you and your copy editor is going to just dump his coffee all over your manuscript and your art director will curse your name and sales and marketing will forget your name and they forget you're, they ever knew you and your publisher will realize you have no true talent and she's going to cancel your contract and it's over. And your little pipe dream of being, you know, an author or an illustrator or whatever, or a musician, it's over. You've, you've just been fooling yourself. Have you felt this way? I mean, hands up if you felt this way, right? Well, in case you were wondering, yes, this is where I'm at right now. These are all the fears that I'm struggling with right now because I am working on my second book. It's technically not my second book that I've written, 
but it's the second book to be published and it's the, the second book that's actually you know seeing the light of day so i'm in the throes of it and I sent off my uh revision one of my revisions a few weeks ago and i'm waiting to get the notes back and every morning i'll tell you i'm waking up at 3 30 in the morning with hot sweats and adrenaline rushes out of anxiety that she probably hates me by now and she's gonna like give me very bad news like i'm waiting in for in two weeks i'm just, like the hammer is gonna drop and i'm just gonna get this horrible news so um what i'm doing right now is i'm just throwing myself into the illustration strategy for the book which i feel more adept at because that's what i'm trained in and uh i'm trying to put aside the, the mindset of like, I'm not adept enough at the writing, at least I can be somewhat adept at the illustration, even though the anxiety I'm feeling is like making my illustration job harder. Well, this has a name and it's called sophomore book syndrome. The fact that it has a name means that I'm not the only one that has ever gone through this. In fact, every writer goes through this. Your second book, is in many ways way harder than the first because the first you were drawing down from that million dollars and your second book you realize your bank account has gotten fairly low and you don't have the the capital that you had at first so this book that i'm writing right now you know because it's been so much harder and because I had, I was working on What the Night Sings for three years and then the book got published and I was, I've been speaking and trying to, you know, promote one book at the same time as writing the next. Well, what it's meant is that I have not truly been living my life. I came to this point where I was like, I, I'm like a zombie. I can't live like this anymore. And what I realize is that it's been all output and no input. I have not been putting back into that bank account the same at the same rate that I've been drawing it down. And so I find myself in a sort of um, a sort of poverty, you know, a sort of inspiration poverty or creative poverty that is uh, really demoralizing. So I'm starting to make some changes. This is where I'm at. So this is why I hope and why I thought it would be helpful to you guys to hear it. So in my last Vesperisms, I talked about creating room at the top or um, building into your life a, a, you know, a, a certain amount of time or a certain amount of uh, focus for what makes you happy and nourished. So we always think about, just to recap that uh, idea, is that we're always told minutes a day uh, to do uh, yoga, and 30 minutes a day to create a, a healthy meal from scratch. Or it's only 30 minutes a day to sit and pray or meditate. Um, it's only 30 minutes a day to have a good long conversation with your kids. You know, all of these things that take 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, or 30 minutes in your sketchbook a day, you know? 30, 30, 30, 30. If you have 10 things like that, you'll never be able to sustain it because 30 times 10, you know, is 300 minutes or you know however long that is it's that's like a part-time job and you don't need another part-time job okay but if you frame it in terms of what makes you happy and fulfilled you brainstorm that list you'll come up with some things that might surprise you like for me the things that I came up with when I made this list were very simple things they weren't like oh I need to like travel once a month to the UK and then I'll really feel like I'm, I'm nourished and fulfilled. No, no. It's like ending my day sitting in a chair reading a book. And there's no time on that. It's just, it's about quality, not quantity, right? So I brainstormed this list. And now what I'm doing this week is I'm recognizing that those things that nourish me are input to this bank account. So things like, you know, either whether it's on a daily basis or a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So for me, on a yearly basis, if I take one decent trip, especially if it's to the UK, if I do one trip, that sets me for the whole year. And I add to that bank account a bank of inspiration and, I, and ideas and nourishment and 
um, my soul is sort of rebuilt on a daily basis if I just get you know a certain amount of time to myself with no devices around me and I'm just like sitting in the chair by the window or if I'm reading an actual paper book um, that is another deposit into my bank account if I'm writing poetry as opposed to just or if I'm journaling but especially if I'm writing poetry that's input into my writing and it, it brings up more word pictures if I'm spending uh, quality time with a friend it's input so how to implement this is first of all to recognize that those things are not indulgences they're input into your bank account of inspiration and if you are a creative person if your job is to be creative you have to be putting into that bank account it's actually part of your job description and you can't feel guilty about it you have to, you have to put aside the guilt it's not a luxury or an indulgence it is part of your job description and we can think about it in terms of the 80 20 rule so the 80 20 rule says that 80 percent of your time is done doing your main job description and then 20 percent is doing you know the extra so um, if if 20 now there's a little caveat to this because you can you can 80 20 it to death like for instance if 80 percent of your time you're actually working and then 20 percent of your time you're promoting that's a different calculation than what I'm talking about I'm talking about like of that 80 percent that's your your actual creative job description Right, so once you've got your admin and your promo and all of that stuff out of the way, that 20%, 20% of your 80% has got to be input. It's got to be. You've got to be spending 20% of your time. Now, however you calculate that, whether it's um, quantity or quality, it doesn't really matter. But roughly, you should be spending 20% of your time depositing back into that bank account in ways that really feed your soul. I'm not talking about like while you're illustrating, plugging in your headphones and listening to another episode of Grey's Anatomy. That is not what I'm talking about, about input. That's the kind of input that, that drains you and depletes you, and or at least me. Um, it, it's just busy work. It's, that's not true input. It's just busy work. So what I'm talking about is the 20% of your life, of your work life, that feeds you and nourishes you and makes you feel alive. Because we have to be creating out of a place of abundance and not out of uh, depletion or um, I was going to say depression, but sometimes depression can can be part of that input. So I don't want to get too far into that. But you know, some art is created out of pain and some is created out of joy. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a place of a full bank account of experience and inspiration and nourishment the same way that you maybe take 20% of your day to feed yourself food taking 20% of your your life your work life to nourish your soul because we work out of the soul creative people people in creative fields we work out of the soul so that's where I'm at I'm trying to figure out ways to implement these things into my life and right now uh, where where I'm at is um, waking up at 7 a.m. and getting some other stuff out of the way uh, adding a book to my meal time um, taking a short walk around my neighborhood it's just little things like that that actually do make me happy being around trees like taking a walk around the trees these things nourish me ending my day with a book not quantitative they're not like oh, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes walking I'm gonna spend 30 minutes reading that book no I'm just going to do it until I feel like I've made the deposit in my bank account. So I hope that helps you. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think and what nourishes you. What have you found that works for you in your to, to fill that bank account? Or if you haven't thought about it this way before, just brainstorm in the comments and let me know what you're thinking. And I hope this helps and we'll talk again next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.